first of all, we will have a brief revision of previous session and continue with the next one. Okay, previous session I am going to say Monday. Renewable energy resources and day and day choose them. So, what is the definition? Renewable energy. Resource. So, what is the primary definition? There are two definitions for renewable energy. One is uh, the source which can be renewed in a short span of time. Sources that we consider uh, as renewable energy, let's say solar energy, wind energy, come under the second definition. They will not exhaust in a human lifetime scale. Human lifetime, manam, hundred and this one, scale of. Our scale of the units of hundreds, under the hundred years, two hundred years, three hundred years, point as a re, our sources. Uh, Deplete up of exhaust up of complete type of renewable energy resources out there. Example solar energy, wind energy, and the sources which can be renewed in a short span of time. And if we have a human lifetime, we choose the short span. Regenerate like biofuels. बाय फ्यूल से इतने और सारे वो प्लांटेशन है इस तरह मत और सिक्स मंथ्स को वाले एक बार की इडोस तो नहीं अब पिंडे से फ्यूल दी जाए इस तरह मलिक प्लांटेशन है इस तरह सो द सोर्सेस कैन बी रेन्यूअर विद इन सिक्स मंथ्स आर एयर अलांट वाट नहीं दें कमांडर दिस नेपिशन और Under the second definition. 
this resource which will not exhaust in a human lifetime scale. Okay, so we have seen already this hydroelectricity in the previous session and uh, various implications with a conventional hydroelectric plant like the various environmental issues linked with conventional hydroelectric plant were discussed and alternative sources are what? Micro and pico hydroelectric plants will work as alternative sources for uh, conventional hydroelectric plants. I mean they have very less environmental effects. So that part we have discussed in the previous session. So now uh, we go to next one, solar energy. Okay, so this solar energy, uh, the energy from sun can be sensed in two ways, one the light energy, another is uh, heat energy, so both can be converted into or both can be stored, captured and stored as an energy resource, so one uh, light energy Another is uh, heat energy. Sun produces both of them, and uh, we can tap both of them and uh, store. Uh, so, for uh, light energy conversion, we are using solar photovoltaic systems. They are called photovoltaic. What do they do? Photons, light will be converted to voltage. Uh, whatever solar panels we are using, they convert uh, light energy into voltage, electricity. So they are called solar PV systems. Another one is uh, solar thermal systems. They convert the heat energy into usable power or electricity. Okay. Uh, so, coming to solar PV systems or whatever, solar thermal systems. Uh, so, what are we doing? Whatever, solar cells. We are considering solar cells, let's like, say. So that solar energy, light energy is converted into electrical energy, right? Various types of 
solar cells that convert light energy into electricity. Okay. So another one is solar thermal systems. So they are here uh, the heat energy from the sun will be converted to electricity. So if you see the sunlight received on earth will have components or uh, spectral distribution like that. The majority component is green. By 50 nanometers. The highest intensity light reaches on Earth is green in color. And rest the blue, violet are uh, with less intensity. And the IR, infrared, is of very minute intensity. Okay, so this portion, if you use this portion of the sunlight. It is solar PV systems. Uh, light energy is converted into electricity. And if you use this portion, infrared region, it comes under uh, solar thermal systems. So usually heat is generated by what? Infrared radiation. So heat transmits from one place to another place by conversion or convection term that requires a medium. So when you touch a hot body, you will get effect. But from sun to earth, there is no material medium to transfer that heat energy. So it will be transferred as radiation. What kind of radiation is that? Infrared radiation. So the infrared radiation carries the heat energy from the sun. Okay, not it? Uh, so, how to capture that? Infrared radiation. Intensity is very low, but spectrum is very broad. Uh, so from 7,000 onwards, uh, even for uh, 10 lakhs, you have infrared radiation, infrared uh, region. The network captured here. Like. So, when any material absorbs light or whatever kind of energy, electrons will jump from one level to another level. Right? So, if the material contains that particular energy gap, then only that particular uh, energy will be absorbed. If you particular energy, you will absorb the energy level. Then only this radiation will be absorbed. Right? So, one of the any materials is called. How many materials do we need to utilize to capture all these wavelengths? Let's say our uh, solar panels usually capture either this green light or yellow light, most of them. All solar panels will absorb either green or yellow light. They are tuned to that particular uh, wavelength. Okay, so what about uh, IR? It is a huge spectrum. So we had to use thousand many different materials to absorb that energy. That may not be possible always. So one simple uh, possibility is to convert this infrared radiation into visible light.
there are certain materials which absorb a particular uh, band of wavelengths and convert into visible light and selective reflecting materials so uh, the solar thermal systems are uh, basically of two types absorption type and reflection type so whatever uh, solar water heater systems that we see uh, in our house solar water heater system is absorption type solar system solar thermal system so here uh, the sunlight is absorbed and uh, <coughs> heats up the water in the tubes so we will be using copper tubes and uh, uh, a material black coating at the bottom of that panel so we can so we take a black coated material and over that we place all these copper tubes carrying water what happens the heat will be absorbed by those black coated material and it will be transmitted to water so that's how this solar water heater system works another kind of construct is uh, reflection type uh, solar heaters that we use in solar cookers <laughs> so we take uh, sunlight from uh, reflecting on a parabolic reflector so we consider the parabolic reflector and that uh, focus of the parabola we keep the vessel or utensil whatever we wish to cook so what happens all the light rays will be focused on to this point so there we keep the cooker whatever utensil food will be cooked so here also it is a reflection type solar thermal system this is absorption type solar thermal system so in both the cases we will be using this kind of materials selective absorption materials or selective reflector materials so they reflect only that particular kind of wavelengths uh, which convert uh, our uh, thermal energy into uh, visible region right so we don't need to go for uh, multiple materials to absorb all these wavelengths so these materials will absorb all of them and convert into a particular wavelength so that is how the solar thermal systems work so there are two types solar pv and solar thermal and uh, next one is wind energy so wind energy systems are basically of two types one is uh, horizontal axis windmill horizontal axis another is vertical axis wind so if the axis of the windmill that you are constructing is horizontal it is horizontal axis windmill and if the axis of the windmill is vertical
horizontal axis windmills uh, need to be set in a particular direction. Only one in a particular direction. Whereas vertical axis windmills walk in any direction because it takes air from any direction and generates electricity. So these vertical axis windmills are more uh, efficient compared to horizontal axis windmills. Okay, and uh, these can be set even on a rooftop. So because of these lightweight materials and high efficient uh, uh, dynamos. So what we are doing is we are connecting a dynamo with a fan, right? A simple <coughs> wind. So when wind uh, pushes that fan, electricity will be generated. Okay. Uh, so because of this high efficient uh, dynamo systems, uh, now we are able to develop this rooftop windows. Even on our roof, we can we are able to generate electricity. Even with this small, very low speed winds also, electricity can be generated. So that is uh, advantage with uh, vertical axis windows. Whereas uh, for horizontal axis. Uh, you need to have very huge amount of uh, air flow. So this should be set to only on a hip tops or wherever you have very huge air flow. So that is the issue with conventional horizontal axis windows. They are only side specific, you cannot generate it everywhere. I mean, in AP, where are, where do we see windows? Windows at one and AP have? Anantapur. Anantapur, Tirmala, Tirpati, Chitur, all these areas are covered with windows. Okay. So next one. What is the other resource? Solar energy, wind energy, biofuels. Biofuels are bioenergy conversion. So, bioenergy conversion is of two types. One is the biofuel, another is biomass. So, we'll be using a selective plants which produce uh, fuel. And uh, when you just squeeze that, you get fuel. And after purification, you get uh, perfectly usable fuel, like methane and all, can be generated using plants. That's one way. That is biofuel. Another is biomass conversion. So biomass are intended. It is uh, electricity produced from waste. So rural waste, agricultural waste, and that. So that comes under this category, biomass. Along with urban waste. So mana food material waste kani, even it ni goda mana mo gas ka convert chay galgi the. That comes under biomass conversion. What do we need? So, we need food material, we cow dung, we need to convert gas to gas. We need some bacteria to convert our uh, uh, carbon materials into or dissociate those carbon materials into fuel. And then, Hydrocarbons are used in the hydrocarbons, we can use the methane gas and we can use the bacteria in the bacteria, most of it. Right? And that process is called fermentation. So, then water in KO mixes, we can use the fermentation to take place. We 
using backing here. Otherwise, uh, we may also use enzymes. So for uh, biofuel conversion and biomass conversion, uh, right now we are using uh, <coughs> enzymes and bacteria. So here the conversion efficiency is at most uh, 15 to 30 percent. Very less conversion efficiency. So the rest of the material is a waste material. So what happens? I mean, we cannot rely on these materials actually. And though we are able to produce uh, fuel from a simple plant, it produces a last lot of wastage on it. So that is why still these are under research. I mean, uh, to improve this conversion efficiency. So conventional methods produce only 15% efficiency. Whereas in laboratory techniques using bacteria and enzymes, uh, people are able to reach uh, around 30%. So still, it needs to be improved. So this applies for both uh, biomass, like uh, rural uh, wastage and urban wastage can be converted to energy. Another one is biofuel. Even for uh, biofuel conversion, we require uh, these enzymes and bacteria. So that's about uh, Bioenergy conversion. What is the next one? Geothermal energy. Geothermal energy. So the heat inside the air. still existing and it will not exhaust in a human lifetime scale. So that is also considered as renewable energy resource. Uh, so what do we do? We dig holes into the... Uh, so where do we get this geothermal energy? So geothermal energy is how much we get low energy and heat energy by the degree of water. What is the outlet? So it is at the tectonic plate junction. So wherever you have tectonic plate junctions, that geothermal energy can be taken out. Sindhya Lakhanamne, entire Himalayan region is a seismic zone where you have a combination of uh, tectonic plates. Two, three tectonic plates join at the Himalayan region. So there we have geothermal outlets. Shimla, Darjeeling, Yerala, Manaki, geothermal energy went sometime, hot water springs sometime. geothermal energy will be leaking out. So we can capture them. So there are two types of them. Open loop. So where we will be just uh, digging out all the fluids coming out of that geothermal vent. Uh, capture the heat energy, run the turbine and pour out the waste material outside. That is one way. Another is a closed loop. So in closed loop systems, we capture the heat energy 
so we are not actually utilizing the infrared light received from the sun but capturing the visible light and convert it to heat energy so there those materials are called selective absorber materials or selective reflector materials okay so they absorb the green light so in solar uh, water heater systems they absorb the visible light either green or yellow and convert into ir so here we require selective absorber that converts visible light into ir whereas here we require selective reflector so they absorb the visible light and reflect the ir light so that kind of materials are used here in solar cookers whereas here in solar water heat systems we will be using selective absorber materials that convert visible light into ir so it is a high wavelength conversion mechanism that we are using in solar thermal systems